Alrighty. So, uh, first question. How old, were you, how old were you during the incident, and where were you? I was born in uh, 1954 in Key West, Florida, uh, at Boca Chica Naval Station. So during the crisis, we were up in Miami, 1962, October. All right, how'd you find out this whole thing was happening, and where, and like, what was your reaction? Well, we didn't have the social media we have today. Back in those days, it was basically AM radio, and there were three television stations that were black and white. And so when the news broke in, uh, it was pretty intense. But you got people have to remember, back in those days, in the 1960s, early 60s, the population down here was sparse. I mean, there were more pine trees than people. It's not like today. And we had a very massive Air Force base called Homestead Air Force Base, but that was a SAC base. Strategic Air Command, where they used to bring in heavy offensive bombers like B-52s and B-47s. And we knew something was up when all these eight-engine heavies, like the 52 Stratofortresses, started coming over our neighborhoods from places like Nebraska and other places where they were bringing, marshalling down all these bombers down the homestead. And Man, you could smell the kerosene from the engines and you could hear the rumbling and there were a lot of activity. So as soon as the news broke, we started to see a lot of air activity and then it was something called the Florida East Coast Railroad. Henry Flagler built that, made it Key West in 1912, it was right along US-1. And then we started noticing uh, a lot of trains, like it's a busway now, but it used to be a railroad, a lot of trains with military hardware, tanks, soldiers, all sorts of khaki colored equipment heading south and it was a lot of it and it was happening fast. Alrighty. You okay? I'm good. All right, sorry. Why do I look bad? <laughs> Nothing. Anyways, um how did it how how did it feel being so close to like the ground zero of the situation? Well, in in the area where I live now, there was a lot of tomato fields and strawberry fields and one day if obviously school had been canceled, we were up in Miami. Uh, there was the 101st Airborne had parachute practice in a field not far from where we were staying. Airborne troops landing in tomato fields. And then they put up a Hawk anti-aircraft missile base near what is now Black Point. And it got real in a hurry. It really did. And then they were actually in the old Perrine Shopping Center, which is no longer there. They were selling drop-in your backyard prefabricated bomb shells. Good morning. Bomb Mass shells. Mass will be celebrated in the chapel no in five minutes. Mass yeah. will be celebrated Mass. in the chapel in five minutes. All students and faculty are cordially invited. Students, today is the block. Homeroom followed by periods one, seven, six, and five. Thank you. All right, continue. Okay, yeah, it was, it was something else. It was, and then, you know, we all... Uh, we did those duck and cover drills. I'm sure your teacher talked about was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm aware. At least, you know, the fact that the duck and cover was uh, in the age of hydrogen bombs, which are much more powerful than atomic bombs. It yeah. was going to be a band aid. It wasn't really going to help. Yeah. All right. Um, where was it? Did Did you think like did you did, did you think like realistically like missiles were going to be fired? Like, very, very much so. Yeah. Very much so, because Nikita Khrushchev was a Soviet premier with a fourth grade education hmm. who really acted up at the United Nations by banging his shoe on the desk, screaming he was going to bury America. And you know, remember, it's the height of the Cold War. And, you know, I mean, did we really win World War II in the East, Eastern Europe? I mean, my, all we did was exchange one dictator for another. You know, we exchanged uh, Hitler for Stalin. And so, yeah, we really thought there was a, in, in that frame of mind, it was not if, but when. And so, yes, to answer your question, yes, I believe it was very much a possibility. All right. And how, yeah. how, like, how was, like, your reaction to the end of the incident when, like, the compromise was reached and such? Well, you know, it's kind of funny how you think when you're a kid, right? Because, you know, the parents, you know, usually your parents are pretty stalwart, and they, they were very upset. You know, they were very conscientious. And the thing I remember the most is that uh, people started going to church. People had not gone to church in a long time were going to church. And... Uh, we waited very patiently. There used to be a four o'clock newspaper called the Miami News, and we were waiting for any deal details we could get. Because remember, there was a blockade, mm -hmm. and the Russian ships were supposedly with submarines were gonna run that blockade, and that'd be World War III. 
So, yeah, I can tell you, we got out the National Graphic Maps and we looked at uh, where Berlin was because Berlin was the flashpoint, Berlin, Germany. Mm -hmm. No, it was real. All right. Thank you for your time. Oh, no, not at all. But I got to tell you, man, take those photographs I showed you. Share them with the class, right? All right. Try to imagine in your backyard, where do you live? Um, I... You forgot where you live? Oh, <laughs> I don't know the name. I'm... Okay, well, okay. That, that place where you may live, uh, try to pretend there's a park across the street like there is here. And All then right. wake up one morning and you hear a lot of noise and you see a lot of soldiers. There's a rocket base, an anti-aircraft rocket base next to your house. That's real. All right, <laughs> ciao. All right. Thank you. You got it, buddy.